Welcome back. Now the DA in the Northwest is calling for tough action against police officials allegedly involved in helping prisoners escape. A recent report shows that 44 police officers in that province alone have been implicated. Suspects have managed to escape from police station holding cells, some while in hospital and others even during court appearances. Now it's said that uh, 62 detainees are still at large, but Freddie Sonakile, DA Northwest spokesperson, joins us now uh, for more. Freddie, thank you so much for your time and good afternoon to you. I mean, as the DA, what's your reaction given that this is the reality, uh, particularly in the Northwest, I'm sure in various other parts of the country, uh, that it seems police stations and police officers can no longer be entrusted uh, with keeping uh, detainees inside the police cell? Yeah, it is quite shocking, actually, more especially for a province as rural and as small as the Northwest. Like you saying that if it is 44, only in the Northwest, one wonders what the national picture looks like, what it looks like in bigger provinces, you know, because this only caters only for a small province as Northwest. And considering also that we have for a number of times indicated that there are a lot of issues that need to be resolved from the buildings where the police stations are at, well, most of them are even leased from private people. However, they are in a very bad condition, yet no one is saying anything. So very limited, if not little or not at all, uh, vehicles that the police have to use. So obviously such will come up. You know. and that was going to be my next question to you, Freddie, is that South Africans are probably wondering how do detainees and uh, prisoners escape the eyes and the hands of the police? One would think that we do have systems in place uh, to ensure that this doesn't happen, but surely with the stats that we are looking at this afternoon, it's not the case. Yeah, clearly it's not the case, and one can attribute it to a number of factors. Either the working conditions that the police find themselves in are not mm. satisfactory. Two, the people who are in the system themselves. Have we as a country gotten to a point where we go beyond just taking them to a police training school, but also do continuous verifications? Because I've seen a report previously that says that a number of um, police officials actually have criminal records themselves. So you start asking all these questions. For example, in the Northwest, where one is based and works at, there are even police officials who own taverns that do not close after the regulated waking hours and all that. So these are some of the questions that you wonder, how did they happen? So when we saw this, that while we were shocked and concerned, we actually at the back of our minds thought, but it was bound to be, because there seems to be no, no system. Maybe the debate on the devolution of the powers from national to provinces must start them in the country now. Mm. And I know that as the DM, I mean, you've started asking these questions within the legislature um, around this worrying statistics. But with the 62 suspects that are still on the run, have you received an answer, convincing answer, that is, as to what the plan is, the strategy is to ensure that they are apprehended again and to ensure that this does not happen in the province again? No, no, we haven't re received a response to that. Actually, the response was saying that it will be a security threat if we take it there to say what the plan is to apprehend them again. But, but it's quite concerning, especially when you look at the time, because we asked this question to say, from 2019 to date, how many? And this is the number that we got. So it means that others, when you check on the stats, they escaped around your 2019 October, they're still on the run. So it means that either the plan that the police are having is not working, or there's no plan to apprehend them ever again. Mm. So they are so somewhere in one village or society. I mean, I can imagine for a resident in the in the province of the Northwest, the question then is, if there's no plan, or maybe there is a plan, but they can't divulge it yet, they're still working on it, what about the resident's safety? What happens to my safety if I live in the Northwest province? Because according to the information we have, the crimes that the suspects have allegedly committed range from uh, murder, attempted murder, illegal possession of firearms and robbery. So what then is to happen? of community safety uh, during this time? 
Yeah, it is, it is a very serious concern. That is why yesterday we met with SAPS as, as part of the portfolio committee. And it's one of the questions that we asked. We said that within seven days, he must provide us with a plan of how they intend to deal with this and a very convincing plan for that matter. As it is, you are wondering that there are so many crimes that are being committed, not only against women and children, but also crimes generally that are committed in the Northwest, whereby uh, the people who have committed the crimes are never found. So you are wondering that as part of those who have managed to escape, how many of them have actually recommitted other crimes somewhere and still have not been captured? You know? Yeah, and and I think just to also uh, uh, emphasize on 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 where these um, uh, escapees and where these um, you know uh, uh, detainees actually escape at, I think maybe let's let's not only you know talk about the northwest as a province, but specific police stations, specific areas within the northwest. Do you that, do you have that information for us, as, uh, Freddie, as to where exactly such activities are prevalent? Yes, and interestingly, it is at the big towns of the Northwest, mm. your uh, Rustenburg, and you'll know that Rustenburg is predominantly mining, a mining town. There are so many mines, there are so many people from outside countries, foreigners, there are people from other provinces as well. So you can imagine. Number two, it's your Bochis Broom. I think it's the second biggest, is not the third biggest town in the Northwest. Um, the third one is Bitikong. Bitikong is actually a township also in around Rustenburg. Then the fourth one is your Mahike, which is the capital city. So it shows that this, especially in this semi-urban type of uh, police stations, this is where all this is happening. And one yeah. would have thought that that is where, where your infrastructure is best, uh, where your uh, vehicles of the police must be in order and all that, you know. So it's quite concerning that it's in the four big towns of the Northwest. Yeah, it is concerning to an extent that you've also demanded that the Provincial Police Commissioner, Lieutenant General Silo Kuena, brief the committee in detail um, on, on what the next steps are. Just, just take us through briefly before I say goodbye to you, Freddie, what those uh, demands are that you've tabled uh, to the Provincial Police Commissioner. Okay, as part of the questions, he just responded to us to say mm. that they have dealt with the police in terms of the disciplinary regulations of SAPS. But we felt as the party that to say that you've dealt with them in a disciplinary form without talking also to the element of criminality is not enough. Because, for example, if you just dismiss someone who assisted a prisoner or a detainee to escape, it's not enough. I believe that it is also criminal. They must also take us to a point that says, yes, in terms of the labor laws, we've disciplined them in terms of the regulations of subs and all that. But you must also come forward to say, criminally, what have they done? Are these people being charged? Have they faced the might of justice as well to go through the courts and explain themselves? And if it needs to be that they also become prisoners, that they be taken through that system, or else it will not be sending any strong message to anyone or any police who will also want to do the same in the country.